We're now live on Facebook. Don Mills, there we go. Okay. Thank you. I would like to call this public meeting to order. Uh, it's a special meeting of council um, to discuss the ward boundary review report. And is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest from any of the council members? Seeing and hearing none, I'm going to call on Dr. Robert Williams and uh, Jack Amiadola um, from Watson and Associates to bring, to present the uh, final report on the ward boundary reviews that people can then question and comment on. Oh, Thank I'm you. sorry. Um, okay. This is a public meeting. As per section uh, 222 of the Municipal Act and the Municipality of Central Elgin's Notice Bylaw number 2306, to afford any person an opportunity to make representation with respect to a proposed amendment to the Municipality of Central Elgin ward, boundary, ward Boundaries. Does any member of council have a disclosure of interest? As I asked, seeing none. What method of notice and when was notice given to the public for this meeting? Madam Mayor, notice was published in the weekly CE Buzz advertisements and posted on the municipal website under the Let's Talk Elgin, Central Elgin Ward Boundary Review Project and also on the news and public notice page. Thank you. Now I'm going to call on Dr. Bob Williams and Jack Amadolia uh, from Watson and Associates to present the report on the Municipality of Central Elgin's ward boundary options. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We can uh, hear me, I presume. This is yes. a bit of a rerun. Uh, we did make this presentation. I made this presentation live uh, back in uh, March uh, for members of council because we were on the threshold of making a decision. Uh, and then things happened, as we all know. So uh, even though we went through this once before, I think given that it's been so many months, I thought it would be helpful to, to do a very quick overview of the review as laid out in this brief presentation. So uh, we'll move on to the uh, content here uh, that uh, we've provided. So Lloyd, if you could give me the next slide, please. So. Uh, Watson and Associates in association with me <laughs> retained by the municipality of Central Elgin to conduct a ward boundary review. Jack Amendolia, who is on the call, uh, is uh, a, a partner at Watson and uh, was involved in early stages of this work and attended the open house that we had uh, nearly a year ago back in November uh, to meet with the public. So the review examined two key questions. Does the present ward structure provide effective representation? And would an alternative system provide better representation? So we have to look at the current structure and decide where we go. Now, the assignment uh, had a number of phases. Very early on, we did research and data compilation uh, that involved, uh, in part, interviews with the councillors, deputy mayor, and the mayor, and other discussions with senior staff. Uh, the Watson team put together information on the population and growth forecasting and data modeling related to that. I worked with uh, staff at Watson to develop some preliminary ward boundary alternatives, uh, which we took to this public consultation uh, in New Serum, uh, as I said, back in November, uh, November. And these were preliminary alternatives, some ideas that we thought might be workable on a number of counts, but what we wanted to do is give a chance for the community to tell us something about uh, the options that we provided. And then based on that, we developed these recommended options in the current final report, which, and the full report, of course, is still on the municipality's website. So the, the municipality of Central Elgin was created in 1998 through the amalgamation of the township of Yarmouth with two villages, Belmont in the north and Port Stanley in the south. So it's an amalgamated municipality and the ward system was created at that time. Uh, the council is comprised of seven members. That's the mayor and the deputy mayor who are both elected at large and five councillors elected in single member wards, that is five of them. 
Now, Central Elgin's permanent population has increased by 15% since 1998, roughly 20 years ago, with some moderate growth in the seasonal population. So uh, it, it's not that it's uh, no change, it's not massive change, but there is change. And this is part of the reason why a review is appropriate. The current wards are set out on the next chart. I don't need to uh, uh, work through that very far. I'm sure you're all very familiar with those lines and uh, where the, uh, the current wards go. As I suggested earlier, one of our first, our first part of the work is to look at the current distribution of the wards to look at some of the principal features of those wards. One of them is population. And we'll see from this chart in 2019 uh, that there are two wards that are uh, above what we call an optimal size, what's called on the chart here, the ward average. So there's a couple of them ab uh, above uh, and a couple of them very close, but one uh, is now uh, well below that and getting to a stage where we would see it as uh, inappropriate uh, in, in future. And when we look at the 2030 population forecast, we see that in fact, Ward 3 is now below the threshold for a, a ward that we would like to see uh, in, in, at that time. And Ward 1 is now coming very close to the top end of that range. So you've got one ward at the bottom, one at the top, and the other three sort of clustering in the middle. That's a sign again, that we need to just review whether there might be another way to do this. So in the next slide, uh, we um, review the information that was out there. And I'm not sure that uh, anyone who's, who's watching now will be rushing off to do that. But uh, the information has been available in the, in the months since we presented this uh, uh, report, as, as the deputy clerk pointed out a moment ago. Some of the information is on Let's Talk Central Elgin module. That includes the uh, review of the process we followed, the discussion paper from last November, which provided these preliminary options, and this final report, which was part of the agenda package for last March and, and is now again uh, available, or still available rather, on the, on the website. So the review it did include uh, what we believe was a comprehensive public engagement component. Uh, Feedback and comments were received through the process and, and we've reflected that in the analysis. And that included the public meeting, an opportunity for people to submit questionnaires. Uh, three of us from the team were at that meeting in November. We talked to many people about the ideas we'd put up there. And we took a number of ideas away from those conversations uh, to consider as we move forward. The next slide basically is, is a reminder that this activity is structured under the Municipal Act. There are two parts to the Act that are relevant. One is Section 217, which is, authorizes a council to establish the number of councillors uh, and to determine whether, and the quote there, whether they shall be elected by general vote or wards by any combination of general vote and wards. And then section 222, building on that last statement, if there are to be wards, uh, that section authorizes the municipality to, and the phrase is to divide or redivide the municipality into wards or to dissolve the existing wards. Now, the process that we followed is one that, that uh, the team at Watson and I have developed over uh, three or four election cycles now in, in more than 20 ward boundary reviews, we've de developed a process which we believe is, is successful in bringing a community to the brink of making a decision of this kind. But what's important to notice is that this is not a process that is established in legislation or regulation. In a sense, the province gives you those two sections of the act that I just talked about, and it basically says, you're on your own guys, you do what you want from there. Nor does it have any criteria. It doesn't tell you what a good ward system would look like. So again, what we bring to this was a review of, of practices elsewhere. 
your clerk did provide some terms of reference and guiding principles at the outset. We've used those uh, in, in this exercise to help develop both the preliminary options and the final options. And those preliminary, those are guiding principles as we call them are on this screen. They start with population parity. Wards should be roughly equal in population. They'll never be exactly that, that uh, level, but they should try to approximate parity. The second principle is that the wards should preserve communities of interest. Largely that's to do with neighborhoods and where, where people live, areas of, of uh, commonality uh, related to the type of housing, the type of economic activity and so forth. The third one, wards should recognize physical features as ward boundaries. In other words, if we're going to draw a boundary uh, between a ward, we don't just make up a line. We don't just go to a map and go from point A to B and say that's the boundary. We should work within physical features because part of the idea is that people should be able to distinguish one ward from another. I know beyond the seven members of council, not a lot of people do that, but it's still helpful to be able to say, well, ward, ward one ends at this point, ward three ends at this point. And so we want to use those kinds of features in designing a ward. Uh, principle D uh, is, is building on A in the sense of saying, and we saw that in the chart a few moments ago, the ward system will recognize areas where population change is forecast. Normally that's growth. Occasionally it can be a, a decrease in population, but what we're trying to do, and the phrase that I like to use, and it's in the report somewhere, we want to establish wards that do not become out of date the day after you adopt them. We anticipate that there will be growth. And, and if we can, we accommodate that in the wards that we draw. And the final one, a kind of overarching uh, principle in all of this uh, is that wards should deliver effective representation to the residents of central Elgin. And on the next slide, we'll talk for a moment or two about about what that means. Effective representation is described as overarching. In other words, it's the one that sums up the whole process. And it's a concept that came out of a, a court case uh, heard by the Supreme Court in, in uh, 1991, uh, which was involved with electoral boundaries. Uh, it, it happened to be in Saskatchewan, but it's a set of principles that, that have been widely applied across the municipal scene in Ontario. So what that basically says is that wards should help citizens stay represented. And that means not just what happens on election day, but in between. Wards should allow each resident to have what we call here comparable access to their elective, elected representative. And conversely, when a councillor is speaking and more particularly voting, in governmental deliberations, they're doing so on, on behalf of approximately the same number of residents. So it's again, how well you are represented, not about who the people are who are sitting there, but about how that role is played. So in determining what constitutes effective representation in central Elgin, it may be necessary to, if you will, juggle uh, these principles. That's not to make it sound like it's a game or a trick. But what we have to do is find a way to bring those uh, principles into some kind of a balance that maximizes the capacity for residents to achieve effective representation. And that's partly why that issue of a huge population gap is significant. For some people, uh, their vote is what's referred to as diluted. It takes twice as many of them to elect a councillor as residents of another ward. So we want to try to uh, get around those problems uh, in a new system. The next uh, slide is a quick summary using the, the uh, principles that I've just talked about in relation to your present system. And you'll see that in two of the principles, we, we believe uh, that, they, that the system is unsuccessful. The second one, a major settlement area, in this case, of course, it's Port Stanley, is divided. 
uh, that's not what a preserving a community of interest should do. And moreover, the rural area is divided up into four parts. Two other wards don't really share a common interest. And this in particular has to do with, with uh, the um, present um, ward that covers both the east and the west side of, of St. Thomas. That, that uh, is in a sense a ward that does not have what we would call coherence. That, that's the current ward four. And then uh, uh, under the growth area, as I explained a few moments ago, one of the wards is nearly at the top, the other is nearly at the bottom. This suggests that as you move forward, the current imbalance won't correct itself. All of those lead us to say that the current system probably should be reconsidered. Now, we, we're not taking that as, as a kind of uh, given, if I can put it that way. This certainly is part of the assessment. Maybe we need to think about it. But in the next slide, we can see, and, and again, in the report, it's spelled out. We, we asked the community, members of the community what they thought. What did they like? What were the strengths of the current system? What are the things that, that uh, would lead us to say, well, we can ignore those other factors? And you'll see that the, um, uh, the strengths are, are fairly lukewarm, if I can call it that. Well, it seems to be working. Uh, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing uh, that we're excited about, but it's okay. Uh, and, or in the second one, it's stability. We know what it is. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the weaknesses touch on the things we've just talked about. Certain communities are not adequately reflected, both in terms of their own interests and geographically. Port Stanley is broken up. Eastwood and Lyndhurst are lumped together and have very different issues. The, the basic uh, scale here, the, the, the balance, if you will, is tipped toward the view that maybe we can do a bit better. Maybe there are things that can be done that would uh, move beyond the current ward configuration. But just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's, it's the way it should always be. The community changes, the wards should recognize that. And the next slide then um, uh, just addresses one other quick concern. Uh, many people would say, well, the wards are a problem. If you, if, they're, if you can't keep them balanced and they don't work, why, just, why not just eliminate them? Uh, and we took that perspective seriously, but, but in a review based not only on interviews with council, but also with the community, that Central Elgin is not a simple community built around a single, sorry, could we go back for a second, around a single population node. For a start, you've got two fairly uh, good sized settlements, one in the north, one in the south. That does not lend itself to a, a system of no wards. Um, and and uh, other clusters, other population areas are not uh, f uh, located close to one another. There's a lot of dif distance. So having no wards is really something that doesn't apply in a community of this kind. And in fact, most of the members of the community agreed that that's not the direction to go. Also, um, one of the themes, as I touched on earlier, section 217 would allow you to change the number of your counselors. And we asked that again, just to be uh, complete, uh, to make sure that we touched all of the possible issues. And it's pretty clear that the majority of respondents didn't really want to see that happen. So what we deal with is a system of, of uh, wards, of, of um, wards that, that uh, reflect the current distribution, five wards uh, with the two at large <laughs> positions. So four options were put out there. We ask people to rank them in terms of their most preferred. And this is not that it was a popularity contest, but it also went along with some questions about, well, why do you think that's a good one? What do you like about that? What kinds of things uh, would, would you think be improved uh, by doing that? And you'll see that they're what we call preliminary option 5A uh, was the preferred option by a slight margin over 5C. So, a couple of the others, nobody really wanted it. And you'll notice that only about 10% of the community who responded to the survey said, leave it alone. So we had uh, some preliminary options uh, uh, at stake, uh, at play rather. Uh, 
And in terms of our evaluation of those, we also recognize that the guiding principles we mentioned earlier are not, first of all, they're not all achievable at the same level. Sometimes you have to compromise, if you will, and that's part of effective representation. How far do you push population parity at the cost of community? How far do you push community at the cost of parity? And that's literally what has happened in here. When we ask people in the, in our, in the survey, which of the ones should be given the greatest uh, emphasis? And we'll notice that, of course, um, uh, two population uh, principles, the ones to do with parity itself and the trends were very highly uh, valued as uh, uh, the priorities to build in here. But the protection of neighborhoods, when we look at the medium to high priority, just narrowly higher than population trends. So it's telling us uh, that that award system that reflects those priorities are the ones that would be most appropriate for Central Elgin. So on that basis, uh, and, and I'm not going to go back to these uh, uh, preliminary options. Uh, this is a long way back, and we don't need to revisit that tonight. But two of the options that were removed from consideration, option 5C uh, in the uh, earlier discussion is carried forward here as, as option one. And again, that, that's one that had uh, a, a second, was second in preference in, in the, among the preliminaries. And 5A was modified slightly, and this is important. We talked to the community, we heard back, we made a slight tweak in the proposed boundaries between wards one and two, and 5A has now become option two in this scenario. So let's step back to option one. Again, uh, uh, that um, is, is uh, there on the screen. This is a, 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 um, an option which places the priority on population, population now and into the future. And to do so, of course, we end up with a fairly small uh, ward at Port Stanley uh, to keep the population balanced. And the other principles are reasonably well met in that the next slide shows the population um, distribution across those wards. Uh, the ward three becomes is a little high right now, but as we move through time, it falls right into the to the uh, optimal category. Uh, ward two is a little bit on the large side, but not uh, not unacceptably. So it's it's a quite a good distribution of population. So if population parity and future population are the the principles that council believes it's it should have in its system, then option one is the appropriate one. Uh, and and the next slide ranks those according to how well it it uh, meets those principles. And we'll see that that uh, uh, three of them are we consider are yes it meets them, and two others are pretty close. They are fairly good, and the only reason the the last one is is um, uh, li listed the way it is, comes back to that second one. To get to that parity, it was necessary to divide off part of Port Stanley uh, simply because the population is more than one fifth of, of the, the overall population. Option two then turns it around and says, let's look at uh, a community of interest and we have to start with the major center. Uh, and, and so in this scenario, it's not a neat line, I'm afraid, but it builds on existing landmarks, if you will, or well-recognized uh, features and creates a ward uh, at, at the um, uh, southwest corner of central Elgin that captures that in its entirety. But as we see in the next slide, and as I've alluded to already, to get the community in one ward, you have to step aside from getting parity. And that's what I mean by a trade-off. You can't do both. Now, yes, the population is on the high side, but it's a, it's a perspective we heard very frequently. Port Stanley is one place, and so it should be in one ward. The ripple effect is still pretty good. We, we get the other four wards are quite acceptable, 
Ward three is starting to, to get to the bottom now and will follow fall below that uh, as we grow. Uh, but there really uh, was no other way to, to put all of these pieces together. But that is a ward system as the next slide shows that is um, uh, pretty good on the population. Uh, the growth is not as good as it could be, but it certainly hits the community of interest uh, very successfully and is therefore uh, uh, one of the ones we recommend. So the, the last slide, the next slide rather, uh, is simply uh, re reminding, and we've, we've got uh, uh, this a um, little bit out of date, never mind. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the idea is that the final rec uh, report is considered at a public meeting under your bylaw, and that, that you, your uh, final choice would then be turned into a bylaw. I would like to just emphasize, uh, and, and, and I may ask Jack to step in here for a word or two, we believe that either of these two options is a defensible option. They, they meet the principles that you set for the review, uh, as well as can be expected in the light of the dynamics of your community, the distribution of population, the clusters of population and so forth. One of the points I didn't touch on under section 222 is that this bylaw that we've referred to can be appealed. Uh, there is a process for appeal uh, that would uh, uh, require a submission to the, the local planning a, appeal tribunal, LPAT, the successor of the OMB. And if, if a member of the community doesn't like either one of these or doesn't like the one you picked, that person could appeal it to LPAT. Our view is that either one of these is defensible because you're basing it on a set of principles that have been well understood. And it's not that one principle is right and the other is wrong. They ch achieve different ends. So in the end, uh, we believe that both of these are options that should be seriously considered as, as a future structure for uh, the municipality of Central Elgin. The last slide is just uh, to sign off. And I'll ask uh, Jack if he has a word or two to add. Uh, no, I, I think it was all covered. I mean, I can just reiterate what Dr. Williams uh, mentioned at the end that um, from Watson and Dr. Williams' perspectives, we think both options are defensible, both meet um, the goals that we had set out and the rationale that we had set out for this project. Um, really, the, the main thing to think about are, are what we talk about all the time are trade-offs. As Dr. Williams mentioned, one focuses more on population parity and, and still meets some of the other rationale and some of the other guiding principles, while the other option focuses more on communities of interest. And again, some of the other ones may be traded, some of the other guiding principles may be traded off a bit, but um, that's it. I think, uh, I think everything else was covered. And as Dr. Williams said, if there's any questions or comments, uh, we'd be happy to take them. Thank you very much for your report. Um, I'm going to ask Diane if have you received any written submissions on the proposals? Madam Mayor, correspondence has been received from David Marr, 348 High Street, stating he does not agree with option one and believes that option two is a better choice. He agrees that option two allows for a larger population, but it does not meet the community interest criteria, which he feels is most important. Um, there was also correspondence received from Bob Wheeler, Hillcrest Avenue, stating he supports option one. Both of these items of correspondence have been circulated to council and the consultants. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, we are now going to open this meeting to questions from the public. If you're listening on your computer, tablet, or smartphone, please click the raise hand icon. And if you have called into the meeting using a telephone, please dial star nine. The questions will be taken in sequential order. When given the opportunity to speak, please provide your name and address for the record. I'm now going to open the meeting to the public and Mr. Perrin will be the one receiving these and will let me know who goes in what order. Mr. Perrin, do we have any person who wishes to speak? Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, I see no raised hands. 
No member of the public has any questions whatsoever for us or comments? I'm gonna ask if any uh, members of council uh, have a question. Ma Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, Mr. McGovern uh, would like to uh, address council. Certainly. Mr. McGovern, go ahead, state your full name and address and then go ahead. Yeah, my name is Robert McGovern at 24 Little Creek Place in Port Stanley. Um, I would like to emphasize the fact that in the fall, almost three years ago, a petition signed by 202 citizens wanted fair, the representation of Port Stanley as a unit, which is option two. And I don't think the fact that a petition for the, with that number of people is really not surfaced as being a uh, an important part of this whole procedure. And I'd just like to leave that with you to consider. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. And that is one of, that is the reason we went ahead with the um, study because of that petition. And we just didn't have time before the previous election, but this way we did it right off the bat, not expecting COVID of course, so that we'd make sure it was the new system was in place for the next election. Is there Mr. anyone McGovern, else? Uh, wishes to address council again? Go yeah, ahead. just, just further, further to that. I, I, I don't really agree that it was uh, done very quickly. Uh, we had to write a letter in May of uh, 2019 to remind council that they had 90 days to respond under the law to the, to the petition. And that didn't happen. And we, we waited until May of 2019 to see what was happening to get the ball rolling. So I think that's an important part too. Thank you. We, we were looking at it certainly right from the beginning. Um, we just knew we wanted to make sure it was done before the next election. That was important to us. Is there anyone else that has any questions, Mr. Perrin? Yeah, Mr. McGovern again. Go ahead, Mr. I, McGovern. I do agree that it's important to get it all done for the next election. It's been dragging on as far as some people on my particular street are concerned for I think around 10 years. So yes, it's time to get it done and it has to be done for the next election. And I do appreciate uh, the work that's been done so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else, Mr. Perrin? I see uh, no further hands, Madam Mayor. Okay, while we wait, uh, I'm going to ask if any members of council have any questions. Deputy Mayor Marks. Not so much a question. Uh, I will say I do favor Ward or the option two. I think the report is very thorough. Um, I, I agree fully with it. The, when I look at Ward one, it's the very South Port Stanley. And then I look at the other end, um, the top Belmont, to me, it should be one and five. It's just a very minor thing. I would, if I had a choice, I would rather um, the east part um, in the north be Ward four, Belmont be Ward five. It's a very small preference, but I think most people would associate Ward five as Belmont and to the north. I think you mean the west part would be Ward four. Sorry. <laughs> I know where I am though. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Williams. I, if I could just respond to that, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor, the, uh, the bylaw itself will be coming back through from, from the clerk. Uh, if you want to suggest that the, the wards be numbered in a different way in the bylaw, certainly you're free to do that. We simply worked uh, with our, our understanding and, and attached numbers to them that uh, uh, seemed to work for us. But if if there is a sense that they, they should be numbered differently, that, that shouldn't have any bearing on, on which one you choose or, or uh, what the, uh, you know, what's actually in the report. It's the bylaw at this point that would be the most uh, important uh, document. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Marks. Thank you for that. Again, it's very minor in my mind, but uh, I do appreciate the work on the, on the report and I do agree with it. I, I support Ward, Ward, our option two, there's a lot of logic there. Thank you. Yes, we were. I was noticing the word numbering as well. So I'm sure that's something we will look at. 
Any other members of council have any questions? Councillor Fair. Not in regards to my award, but uh, the option two, I, I sort of lean towards that option, but that option certainly doesn't look very good for ward one, making it a, a giant ward. And all of a sudden the, that really uh, changes the population mix. So they've got 4,000 or 4,000 people without future growth are voting for one member, whereas all the others are quite small. So it, in my mind, it definitely does not meet the population argument. No, but it meets the community argument. Yeah, it does. But the population, uh, all of a sudden we're getting uh, one and a half to two voters for every councillor they have to represent them compared to the others. Thank you. Any other member of council have any questions or concerns? Seeing none, I'm going to go back to Mr. Perrin. Is there any other members of the public that have any questions or concerns? Uh, Madam Mayor, seeing none. Thank you. Well, everyone has been given a fair opportunity to be heard. If there are no further questions, please be advised that any person wishing further information on the actions of council regarding the passing of a bylaw on the ward boundary should email Diane Wilson at dwilson at centralelgin.org, indicating which public meeting they wish to be notified on and providing their name and address. Those who do not have access to a computer and wish to be nom notified should call Diane Wilson at 519-631-4860, extension 286, and provide the same information. This public meeting is now concluded. Any bylaw respecting changes to the ward boundaries will be considered at a future meeting of council. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Both of you, please, Jack. 